types of. Today we're going to talk about how to install crown molding. One of the first steps is to measure your room. Now don't measure it from the bottom because we're not going to do that. We're going to measure it from the very top up here from corner to corner. The basic rule for any carpentry is to measure twice, cut once. Again, it's measure twice, cut once. Okay, what you have to do uh, when, when measuring out your corners of your ceiling to put crown mold up, you're going to have to go from corner to corner and then you're going to add about an eighth of an inch. So let's try that from here, okay? Go up in this corner here. This fortunately is a small corner, so we're going to go all the way up. Go on the corner, I've got 47. And I'm going to go 47 and an eighth inch. Now without getting too technical, what we're going to talk about is some of the general rules and aspects of cutting crown. Cutting crown molding can be pretty challenging at times, especially uh, for us seasoned carpenters. So the general rule for cutting uh, corners on crown molding is upside down and backwards. Let me show you how to do this. Okay, so what I'm doing here, and I've already made a cut to show you what the end product's going to look like. This is going to go from upper right hand corner on the right hand side of the wall that I'm facing to the lower edge, so it's going to be at a 45 degree. Now to get this specific cut, the rule again is upside down and backward. So I'm going to turn the molding upside down. I'm going to sit it up against the, the back in here in the wall. And then I make my cut like so. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure from the top point, that's my corner, this will fit right in the corner, all the way down the other side and uh, to get to the top of the other corner. All right? So we're going to fit it in like so. Okay, so again the general rule is upside down and backwards. As you see, I've got this. This is actually going to be the top. This is the bottom, so I've turned it upside down. And I've got the blade backwards. So it's going to be fatter at the bottom, thinner at the top. So I've got, there's a backing right here. That I'm going to act like this is the wall, and this is my ceiling. So I'm upside and backwards. This is my wall, this is my ceiling. So I take the blade, put it at a 45. Now you've got to really be careful when you're working with the power tools. Always, keep, always know where your hands are and look before you actually start uh, operating it to make sure your hands are up and out of the way. So we're going to go ahead and remove this into the blade area, in the cutting area, and we're going to make our first cut. Now as you can tell here, this is going to be my right corner. This is the bottom, the rounded part is the top, and so when I slip it in there, the next piece that comes in and joins it is going to, going to be a mirror image of this to, to, uh, to form the 45 degree angle for my wall. What I'm doing here now is measuring from this point along the bottom, because that's going to be my longest point. I'm going to measure that and then add a quarter of an inch to the measurement that I just got off the wall. So again, I'm going to take from this point here, it's the longest point, all the way down and measure 47 and a quarter. 47 and a quarter because it's going to add a quarter of an inch for a good bend into the corner to make sure it fits snugly. Okay, so I made this cut here. I'm going to measure 47 and an eighth all the way down over here. And I've got my mark now, right there. Then what I'm going to do, again, is turn my miter saw blade the other direction. So I'm going to take it, turn it to the other, 45 degrees. And now I'm going to take the mark that I've got, turn the molding upside down, and I've got my mark right here. I 
and this is where I make my cut. Got a good clean cut. This is my bottom, this is the top. That's the left side, this is the right side. So it actually goes in backwards. My cuts are completely backwards from what you see there. Okay, let's talk about a couple of uh, tricks that I've learned through the years. Uh, I've, today I'm working purposely with a real flimsy, lightweight tape measure. I want to show you something here. Um, I won't be able to stretch out this tape measure the length that I want and, and go from corner to corner because it's a little bit longer than what I want to work with on the flimsy tape. So what I can do and what you can do is you find a, a stopping point. So you go from the top point, again we talk about crown mold, go from the top to a certain place and let's say right here for convenience sake it's four feet. I'm going to hold <laughs> I'm going to hold my finger there where four feet is, and I'm going to mark it 48 inches. So just like so, I've marked that point. Now I can go from the other edge, from the other corner, and mark that and measure that. So I've got 48 plus 45 and a half. So 48 one way, 45 and a half the other way makes it 93 and a half. So I have now to make a cut, 93 and a half, remember, make it at least a quarter of an inch to an eighth of an inch longer because you want the bend, once you put the both corners in there, for it to snap up and hold up against in the walls. That's why we're making it a little bit longer. Okay, the next step here is we're going to go ahead and install the crown mold into the ceiling against the wall. And what I've got here is a brad nail gun, and I'm using this as my finishing nail gun. Don't want to use a very thick uh, nail at all. Use something very light, but long and sturdy enough to hold it in place. All right, let's proceed. Okay, so that was our first part. Now I'm going to work this all the way around in the corners. Okay, we've got our corners matched up now, and we're ready to go ahead and install the crown mold in this corner here. 